That's enough. <laughs> we passed all the time we need. This is Alpha. Hope you all are having a wonderful weekend. And before we get into what we're getting into today, please welcome Martyr. Ooh, yay! Or should I say official Martyr, as he's known on Twitch. Uh, you might have seen him doing some introductory Link to the Past rando running. That's kind of his thing. To LTTP at all? Streamed OOT randomizer as far as I can remember. Mm. That's what I've been playing nonstop for the longest time. Mm. Like a month. So we are here to live. That's that's pretty much it. Just live. Oh boy. Yeah, for those of you who saw the alter ego run where Chibi Sprite ran through the first three chapters. This is the same game, only with a different player altogether. If you'd like any uh, different name, now would be the time to declare it. It's my name. Yeah, you just want you just want martyr. Nothing special. Still with me there? A word, but it didn't go through, I guess. I said correct. Okay. Yeah, it uh, seems to be going in and out a little bit. In any event, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with how Alter Ego works, first, you have to figure out a personality. And, of course, we're going to do Let Me Select My Own so that, so that Martyr has complete control, more or less, of who his person turns out to be. And then after that, through every stage of life from infancy to to geriatric, he will be given a sequence of scenarios which he has to respond with emotions and actions. And then based on what he does and the results of what he does will affect his character going forward. So we start out with this little true false survey here to set up the initial personality. I will tr probably try to answer these questions honestly. True, 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 true. Yeah, I have no explanation as to why the mic isn't coming through consistently. I am likely to speak whatever comes to mind. False. False. I am a light sleeper who stirs at even the slightest sound. Uh, false? False. Revenge is sweet. True. True. I often feel slow, tired, and down in the dumps. And what's strange is I see the blue, the green border suggesting that you're speaking, and yet for some reason it's not coming through. Bad. Say that again. Oh. True. An important part of every job is knowing whom to impress. Oh. Did you say true? Yes, it's true. All right. Uh, might I make the suggestion we switch to the damn blue demon? Because Discord obviously is not playing well with audio transmission. Blue Demon it is. Yeah, sorry about that. Hang tight, folks. How's it, guys? Mm. They're gas. Gas. Hey, let's go. Yep. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I kind of despise that Discord doesn't have its shit together with that yet. That's the one thing I have to grant Skype is that it still handles that sharing properly. Even after this terrible, terrible update that it's forcing upon us. Uh, 
Uh, just a moment, folks. We will continue as soon as Martyr makes it over to Skype. I guess I should take now to advertise what's coming up over this week. Um, so this week coming up Friday actually marks the one year anniversary of the alpha stream. And Thursday, Wit and I are going to revisit the first game we streamed a year ago, Busy Town, and this time with a proper audio mix, which we did not have the first time because the game sound was completely unhearable. That was to do with the OBS mix that we had to deal with. So with that properly done, we are going to give it one more revisit and kind of bring the first year to a full circle. Howdy. But I had a phone. <laughs> Perfect timing too. I just finished a plug for my anniversary show on Thursday. Nice. Yep, one year, and it will be 250 episodes at that point. You are a dedicated person. I've done my best. Okay, so... So share that pretty screen again. Yep. Oh, there we are. Yep. Hello. Howdy. And again, you should be able to see the game and the chat window. I can see these things. Such as it is. Okay. So, so, um, yes. That is true. Oh, for the car accidents and disaster scenes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. The people who know me best like me as a person. Now, that's subjective. I can't read people's minds, but as far as I can tell, yes, that is true. That's about the best you can do in a situation like that. I'm extremely sensitive to criticism. Yeah, that's true. You get nervous performing in front of people, even when the task is one you know by heart. That caveat makes it false. Okay. The people around you seem happier than you do. Uh, true. You often get the urge to touch walls in which wet paint signs are hung. How literally do I take that? As literally as you feel like. In that case, false. <laughs> Wet. I'm not stupid, but I do like risk. <laughs> Wet. I like wet. <laughs> when you are ill, you become short-tempered and snap at people. True. On important matters, you usually follow your parents' advice even when you don't agree with it. Hmm. Both have been true. I'm going to go through. Yeah, I was going to say, pretty situational, isn't it? It is. It is possible that we live in a world where people can watch our every move. Absolutely true. Mm -hmm. When you're in a quiet place, you get the urge to scream. False. It's okay to tell a white lie if it is guaranteed to bring great personal gain. True. It is often pointless to try to discuss problems with others. True. You are easily embarrassed. False. Children should be seen and not heard. <laughs> Again, situational, but let's go through. You find it difficult to break the ice in conversations with people you barely know. True. Your parents were strict disciplinarians. False. You can usually judge a person by first impressions. False. One way of getting people to treat you fairly is to take an aggressive stance and make them win you over. I don't know. I don't have any experience with that. Mm. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Uh, yeah, go with true, I guess. I don't know. 
I mean, in my view, it's a way. I don't. It's not necessarily the way, depending on the person, but it's certainly right. possible. You think the questions like this are stupid and meaningless? False. And with that survey completed, your initial personality is set. And you can see here the seven stages of life which this game consists of. So, of course, we will begin at the beginning. Martyr, I wish you luck and live your best life. That's a fair, uh, fair starting point. You are in a warm, dark, comfortable place. This has been your place since you became aware that you are alive. It's almost time to enter a different world now. And here are your choices. I'm going to stay in a little longer. Okay. Need more cooking time. Sure. And obviously for any situation, you can make this as true to your own life or as fictional as you like. Yep. Okay. You certainly can't be blamed for wanting to stay someplace safe and warm. Besides, you are learning early the social merits of being fashionably late. All right, come out peacefully. What a good sport. Sure you're ready for this? It can get pretty hectic out there. I will give you one more chance to try and stay in a little longer. Will you take it? No. That's the spirit. You were an easy delivery. Your mom and dad took special classes to help you. Go out there and give them heck. Still too young to swear. Happy birthday and welcome to the world. From now on, life will begin to change rapidly. You will have to learn to accept responsibility, build up your resources, and manage yourself physically and emotionally. The events that transpire over the course of the next few days include your rich Aunt Martha places a $500 bond and trust for you. Yay! You are the most beautiful baby in the maternity ward, and everybody takes your picture. Naturally. Your father buys you a baseball bat and glove for you to use in a year or so. Know when you get older. Dork. Now from here on, you can choose out of the situations how you carry out your life. Now we found out through Chibi's run that we actually do not get to go all the way through the chart before time expires for this phase. What we do not know is how many wind up getting left behind. So just to give you that fair warning. You fair can, enough. Yep, so, so you can select based on... Uh, like based on types of events, you have your socials with all these people, your emotional growth, your mental growth. Still not entirely sure what this uh, surprise box is. Uh, events that could affect your health and body. Yeah, that's basically pretty much it. We're going to start with emotional growth. Start with emotional growth? Mm -hmm. All right. Do you have a system you want to carry out or just... Uh, uh, I don't know what the best route would be, so I'm gonna go with like exhaustive route. So you're gonna say from the from the bottom and up, or from the top and down, or oh, from the bottom up, I think is the way to go. Okay. Um, I believe, I believe the infancy stage technically ends at four years. So what I will yeah. do is I'll keep an eye on the age when it starts getting close. That way I can actually see how many events get left behind for future reference. Fair enough. So your starting, uh, your starting personal stats are these. And this is as a result of your answers from the questionnaire. I'm more social than I am smart. That's fucked up. <laughs> Not a bad mix, though. You're too young to swear. Yeah, vocational is always going to be 55% because obviously you're too young I to work no right job. now. Exactly. And there's nothing there's nothing that can change that in the survey. Uh, the other four, however, can definitely be affected by that. As for your mental and emotional health. 
that gentle. Mm. Yeah, neither was Chibi. Hers was More down trustworthy. To... <laughs> yeah, Chibi's gentleness was at 1% at one point in her run. Yeah, I think I remember seeing that. Yeah. Okay. So starting with emotional development. Emotional development. Do, 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 do. You don't have very many skills yet. As a matter of fact, life is pretty boring. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to be restless and irritable. And I'm going to look around. Feel like you're going stir crazy? I can just imagine. The room is filled with bright colors, but you have trouble focusing on any of them. <laughs> Keep looking around. You look around and see a large blur about 11 inches away from your eye. How precise. Every once in a while it moves. Hey, wait a minute. Just as you had that thought, it moved again. Keep looking. Congratulations! You found your hand. Yay! This may not seem like much of a big discovery, but it is. You'll have to learn how to control your hands as part of your childhood development. Hmm. Now, now when you're an adolescent, those hands are going to get you into quite a bit of trouble because that requires a different kind of hand control. I don't, I don't think I am uh, currently eligible for the Supreme Court. No, not, not yet. Not yet. Nope. Not there yet. Okay. Uh, intellectual development. Lying on your stomach in the crib, you notice an interesting object an arm's distance away. It has a round shape at the top and a ring on the bottom. Does it really? Hmm. Uh, neutral? Grasp for object. All right, how could these two choices possibly go together? I'm going to let you go back and try a more sensible set of responses for now, but let me warn you. Choosing responses without thinking about them first might be interpreted as a sign of poor judgment. People who have poor judgment usually wind up living very difficult lives. Please try again. Basically, what that tells you is it didn't like your combination. Determination. Grasp for object. Firmly grasp it in your hand. Firmly grasp it! <laughs> That's a masturbation joke. <laughs> That's a masturbation joke waiting to happen. Take I'm out... <laughs> like, take out the video that goes with it, take the audio, and turn that oh. into... Yeah. You have the fighting spirit of your Uncle Bill. You sneak and crawl on your belly like a combat soldier heading into battle. You grasp your destination, reach the rattle confidently. Yeah, I just did that. And drool on it in victory. Intellectual sphere shows a marked increase. <laughs> Shake the rattle. This is terrific fun. You spend a good amount of time shaking the rattle and then fall asleep, exhausted by the long trek from one end of the crib to the other. It took so long. Oh, jeez. Intellectual went up, huh? Of course oh, it did. I'm a smart baby. Oh, it sure did. And the final one on that bottom row. Okay. Damn social bullshit. All right, let me pull the save here. A woman walks into a room holding a blanket and a bottle with warm white liquid. Uh oh. Uh. Uh. Angry. Cry. The woman is your mother. She interprets the crying as a sign that you need attention. She picks you up and holds you next to her where it feels nice and warm. She feeds you. Some would say that you have begun to show a pattern of manipulating people who are close to you, but at your age, a child cannot be spoiled. Unfortunately, your mother doesn't know this and begins to feel as if there might be something wrong with either herself or you. Keep crying. <laughs> you are a difficult child who refuses both mother and the bottle. 
sending out loud wails and making your mother feel useless and inferior. Conflict with your parents seems certain if you persist with this kind of behavior. <laughs> yeah, Chibi tried to fashion herself a rebel, but didn't follow through with it. Yes. Let's go with emotional in it now. All More right. emotion. Okie dokie. You are lying on the floor of a big room on a soft, furry blanket. You're on your back staring at shadows that sometimes creep across the ceiling. Every now and then, mom or dad passes by and makes a funny face. Your hands grope in all directions, and your feet pat the floor gently. Almost out of your control. Happy. I'm going to make an O shape with my mouth. Yes, I'm sure you will. Oh. <laughs> you pucker your cheeks in and out and take short, quick breaths. The skin on your face feels alternately tight and loose. A person walks by and twirls their fingers at you. Bite them. I mean, what? Uh, Not an option yet. Turn towards the person. Eh, you're too young to keep the person in view for a long time. Whoever it is, he moves past in a blur. Social. You're lying down in your crib and are greeted by a nosy neighbor who has a child just about your age. The neighbor says, Ah, oh, look at that funny little nose. She turns to your mother and adds, Don't worry, dear. I hear that noses are the last thing to truly look human. She picks you up. Passive. Collect a mouthful of drool. An interesting selection. Very sneaky. You quietly store a large amount of saliva in your cheeks and wait to be held directly overhead. <laughs> oh, we know what's coming, don't we? <laughs> Drool on that bitch. Uh-huh. Splash! A gooey stream showers your neighbor's face and hands while you give her a glassy-eyed smile. She places <laughs> you back in the crib and excuses herself. Nice work. What a bitch. Emotional. Okay. You've just awakened from a nice long nap. Your mom comes in the room and wants to hold you. Sleepy. Smile. It's a dog's life, isn't it? Nothing to do all day except eat, sleep, and wonder what life will be like when you're older. Does life really change after two? Well, mom is coming closer. Uh, attend to her. Couldn't stick with it, huh? There is no consistency in my life. Fair enough. Very good. Eye contact with your caretakers is very reinforcing to them. Parents often mistakenly think that it is the children who need all the attention. Believe me, parents want it too. Your eye contact with her makes her smile. Social and emotional spheres are increasing. Come sleepy. Too tired to interact now? Understandable. You did, however, pass up the opportunity for a rewarding social and emotional interaction. I'll get it elsewhere. Mm. Intellectual. You are lying down in the crib while your mom and dad are speaking in the other room. You hear their voices, deep and muffled, from beyond the door. Why are they paying attention to you? Happy. Sleep. It's very considerate of you to leave your parents with some time alone together. It does seem like a perfect opportunity to attract some attention, however. You have a comfortable nap, and you wake up feeling hungry. Make it noises. You make a variety of noises using your mouth, lips, and saliva. Over and over again. La 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 la. Mm. Gah. Suddenly, your mom comes in. Boy, would I hate to be the parent hearing that kind of sound coming out of the crib. Gah. Yeah. This brings mom closer to you. She smiles at you, and this makes you feel very excited. 
You pound your hands up and down on the crib mattress and move your feet like a person riding a bicycle. You begin to notice that your sounds and movement create responses from others. Stop making sounds. You have missed a good opportunity to develop speech and language skills. Some language experts believe language skills develop when parents begin to reward random sounds by giving attention. Others believe that language skills are the products of the development of inborn structures. You don't suffer terribly as a, choice, as a result of your choice to be quiet, but you will find out later that keeping your mouth shut can be much better than talking too much. Yes? Where are you going? Um, I'll, I will pass, but thanks. Love you too. Well, I had no idea. Anyway. Okay. Let's see how we're doing thus far. Uh, familial has suffered a bit. But I'm smart. Oh, yeah. Intellectual and social have grown. Physical hasn't changed. Vocational, of course, won't change yet. Your gentleness has dropped. Your happiness has risen. <laughs> Fancy that combination, huh? <laughs> uh, calmness is up a little bit, I believe. Uh, yeah, that's about where you are. Let's see if anybody... Uh, just a bunch of robots. All right. Money and debt won't mean anything this phase either. Uh, let's try that. Okay. It's time to go to Aunt Lucy's house. It's chilly outside and you need to be dressed in a coverall type suit. I can't put my arms down. <laughs> yeah, pretty much one of them. Uh, uh, angry. Resist. You react against sque being squeezed into this uncomfortable suit by crying and sending out long sirens of protest. Your grandmother graciously offers to help. Cooperate for grandma. Oh, of course. Grandma is calm, unlike your mom, who is currently at her wit's end. You are learning early in life that no one can supply the endless amount of goodies that Grandma can. Your arms and legs pop out of the suit like the first flowers of spring, which secretly annoys your mom, who feels incompetent. A smart one. Hmm. Eh, which? Left or right? As though I were reading a book. Okay. In American English. You are quietly playing with your father's brand new electronic calculator. Look, the back of it lifts off very easily. Inquisitive. Look, touch, take apart. Your little fingers make efficient pliers. You pluck out the electronic components, tasting one or two as you go along. They're definitely not for eating. You know Dad will be pleased that you're fixing his toy. Next. You are exploring the playpen and feeling very lively. Like a prize fighter, you grab hold of the playpen bars and shake back and forth, flexing your knees. Daring. Take some steps. You're facing the wrong way. You walk into the playpen and fall right on your back. Your head hits the mat with a loud thunk. This could get dangerous. Want to try again? Let's get dangerous. Oh, the agony of defeat. You teeter on one leg for what seems like an eternity, do a half spin, and bounce off the floor. That's enough for now. You'll get the hang of it sooner or later. Oh. Yeah. Mom and Dad are entertaining some friends, and you are minding your own business, sitting quietly in a corner of the room. Suddenly, a man with a big nose and shiny head puts his face right up to yours and says something in a loud voice. Terror. Hit him on the nose. Bam! 
You give him a right to the schnoz, which feels rough and oily. You are terrified, and he thinks you're playing with him. Fortunately, your dad spots him and ushers him back to bother people closer to his own age. Drunk asshole. Good save. Yeah. You're sitting in your high chair, eating your lunch, which consists of crackers, strained peas, and a mug of milk. You are just learning how to eat with utensils. Curious. <gasps> Super Duck plastic drinking cup. Oh boy! I like to pick that up. Oh boy! First, you put the back end of the spoon in your mouth. Then you lift the cup with both hands and try blowing through the spoon as it pours straw. <gasps> Nothing happens. Hmm. Keep playing with the spoon and the cup. Curiosity and persistence are early signs of an inventive personality. One day during my childhood, you might find yourself attempting to rewire the electric hair dryer and have a shocking experience. But for now, you... Stir rapidly. It makes bubbles. It bounces out of the cup and hits you in the face. It causes the cup to fly off the tray and spill all over the floor. Great. Your mother fails to understand the true significance of your discoveries, but acts surprisingly tolerant. Well, good for her. We. Oui. Let's go to that social sector. Okay. While being taken to the park, your dad meets an old college buddy who is wheeling a baby about your age. As the two dads talk, you casually begin to eye the baby in the other carriage. Curious. Whoops. There we go. Put your finger near the other baby's face. A baby! You wonder if it has all the same parts as you. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. Touch the baby's arm. The baby touches you back. You are exploring the environment and learning about one another. This causes your intellectual and social spheres to increase. You seem to like one another. You've made your first friend. I got a friend. Walla walla walla. E.G. <laughs> yeah, let's go to, to emotional. Okay. Up until this point in life, Weasley Wabbit, your stuffed toy, has been one of your best friends. You take him everywhere with you, but he is beginning to get on in years. One of his ears is torn off, and a recent eye injury has made his face look a little lopsided. It has been suggested that Weasley should be retired. You wake up one day to discover Weasley has been moved from the place where you last spotted him. <gasps> Panicky. Seek information. Even though you were driven to find out why your friend has suddenly disappeared, you're not in a frame of mind that would ensure a satisfactory outcome. You question everybody in the house as to the whereabouts of Weasley. Then you confront your mother, who looks very guilty. Calm down and ask about the doll. Mom sees that you're not that upset and tells you a story about how Weasley wanted to be with friends that were more like him. She says that next week you will have a new visitor, a brand new friend who will be just as nice as Weasley. Not satisfied. Bravo. Don't fall for that line of shit. Parents are great at fabricating stories like this when they make mistakes. You won't get your Weasley Wabbit back, but your intelligence and perseverance in this situation make it harder for your parents to tell you made up stories to cover their own asses. Good. Health option. You are alone in the kitchen and begin exploring the closets and refrigerator. <laughs> Adventurous. Move toward the pantry. You swing the pantry door open and see all the beautifully colored jaws, boxes, and jaws. The jaws. I, I can speak English. Hi, I'm Alpha. And. Jars, boxes, and bottles. One jar looks particularly pretty. It's shiny and brown and full of liquid. 
You unscrew the cap and smell what is inside. It smells pretty sweet. Taste it. Tastes good. Put it back. You were drinking a highly toxic cleaning fluid that could have resulted in your early death. You stopped soon enough to avoid permanent damage to your digestive system, but your mother must administer first aid and becomes very frightened. She's too frightened, in fact, to punish you, which makes you confused and depressed. Cool. Sounds accurate. Yeah. So your physical didn't suffer too much, and you yep. narrowly avoided death on that one. The game Gotta love it. Yeah, the game would have been over with the other choice. <laughs> What's she doing having a poisonous thing in the fucking pantry? It's cleaning fluid. That's where cleaning supplies would go. Although I do question the wisdom of having them somewhere accessible to a young child. Yeah. Put it under the sink with a locked cabinet. Sure, absolutely. All right, the intellectual layer at the bottom. Okay. You're touching something smooth and shiny. You pat it with your hand a few times. Uh, passive. Keep touching. Your explorations are only half-hearted. You fail to make the discovery that you're touching a mirror and that there's a reflection of yourself in there. Oh. Emotional. It is announced to you during a heart-to-heart -heart talk that it is time for you to give up from the bottle and drink from a glass like a big boy. Angry and stubborn. Resist. You don't want to give up the sucky suck? Hell no. Nah. So, how are you going to show that, uh, that stand of yours? <laughs> yeah, Throw real. Bottle. Yeah, real mature set here. <laughs> oh, you must really be furious. That bottle is more than just a casual drinking buddy. It's a constant companion. It's been a source of comfort and a weapon against adversaries. You come to think of it as an extension of yourself. Mom doesn't understand this at all, and you get whacked for being disrespectful. Learn to live without it. It'll be tough for a while. You'll turn to Super Duck for comfort. Believe me, cold turkey is the best way to do it. Good luck. The Beatles. <laughs> you know, I'm actually kind of curious whether that was an inspiration behind that drawing. I don't know. Certainly a possibility looking at the designs. You are a guest at your friend Billy's house. His mom, Hi, gives, Billy. you, his mom gives you both a box of crayons and two pieces of paper. I'm feeling artistic. I'm going to draw on the paper. You're behaving yourself very nicely so far, and you draw a pretty picture. I'm going to give it to Billy's mom. A very strong sign of developing social etiquette. Emily Post would certainly approve. So would Molly Kellogg. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. You're sitting in a large place and a furry man walks up to you. <gasps> He's walking around you in circles. Furry man. Curious. Mm -hmm. Point at the furry man. Hey. That man just licked your finger. His head is big and furry and his tongue is sticking out of his mouth. He makes a sound that goes like huh, 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 very fast. He comes over and sits on your leg. Grab him by the head. You grab his head between your two hands. Hey, now that man is licking you all over the place. And mommy says he's kissing you. All over the place, huh? Lick yes. him back. Yes, all over the place. His nose is cold and the hairs tickle your face. He tastes very salty and he has bad breath. 
That's my friend. Woof. Okay, moving forward into the social sector. Okay. You are in a large department store waiting in line, and there is an extremely <clears throat> well-endowed woman standing in front of you. I means she, she got big boobs. And it looks like she may be an interesting person or to big. talk to. When you want to say she's got a big ass? No, the other way around. Uh, shy. Uh-huh. Be quiet. The lady begins to ask you questions. You're shy and a little bit afraid of her. She begins to chat with your mom. You beginning to feel more friendly toward her? Yeah. All right, so uh, what do you want to ask her? Do you have a doggy? She tells you, no, no doggy, only a cat. You inform her that's what daddy said, that's what they cook in the restaurant on the corner. Chinese restaurant. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you would prefer to ask something else? <laughs> <laughs> I tried very hard to pinch a penny like Aunt Edna, but couldn't. Can you? Yeah, you don't get past the word aunt before you're scooped up by your mother to drag a new and drag to a new line. Okay. I guess uh I guess the department store isn't the place to be airing family laundry. Oh, well. Mm. Okay, continuing in order, as we do. Okay. You are alone in your parents' bedroom, and there is a shiny silver quarter on the table. Dishonest. Take that fucker. You would. It's really questionable as to whether a child your age can tell whether something like this is truly right or wrong. You have the vague sense that you shouldn't have picked it up, and your mother sees you stash something in your pocket. She asks you what, of course. So you say... This. Eh, you're not so dishonest. Matter of fact, that was a very trustworthy move. It was a temptation you couldn't resist. You get a big hug for being honest, after all. Can I keep the quarter? No. Oh. The one on the right. One on the right. It's Saturday morning and Dad asks you to help with some chores. But the super dick cartoon hour has just begun. Cranky. I want to watch cartoons. You say... Dad, Super Duck is on the TV now. Come on, champ. Help me in the yard a little. Dad. Dad sees your stubbornness and stops asking you. All he wanted was a little company, and you acted very selfishly. He's outside <laughs> now, by himself. <laughs> I love my dad. What a good boy. Dad makes you feel very important. You use your own special plastic tools to help him. As a reward, dad takes out a big ball. You throw out your hands. And the ball hits your body as you squeeze it between your chin and your chest. You caught it. Yay, I'm Super Joe. All right, first one. Daddy says it's time to go to bed. Tired. Ignore request. You're falling asleep even as Dad is talking to you. He carries you to the bedroom. Go to sleep. Good night. Dad says, I love you. Emotional. Time to feed the fish. 
It's a small <laughs> amount. Something funny? Yeah, when I was about seven, we had like seven goldfish that I overfed and killed within a week. <laughs> well, you pinch a more reasonably sized amount of fish food between your fingers and tap on the glass. There is no sign of Gabriella. Gabriella? Confused. Look for Gabriella. You put your hand in the fish bowl and look for Gabriella. Well, you found her. She's stuck under a rock and her eyes are puffed out and stiff. You think she might be sick. And stiff. And stiff. Take Gabby out. And stiff. You take Gabby out of the bowl and keep her with you in a secret place. Every once in a while, you put her in the bowl to see if she will swim, but she just floats along the top of the water. You bring her a small piece of food and put it in her mouth. You think you're taking care of her, but uh, she's dead. By the time your mom finds out, you already understand more than what she can explain to you. Fair enough. I like it. Mm. All right, social. You're in a sandbox playing with your favorite toy. A larger, stronger child pulls it away from you and screams, Mine! Oh, really? Anxious. Get an adult. You begin to get up and run for an adult, but the bully grabs you and pulls you down. He bites you hard on the leg. Really? Kick that motherfucker. You knock the wind out of him and run away. Your mother gets your toy back for you. That's right. Give me my fucking toy. Intellectual. You are in the back seat of the car during a very long ride. Uh oh. Active. Play games. Your mom has taken along some picture books and coloring books for you to play with. So, what do you want to do? I want to play games with mom. You watch the cars pass you on the road. She uses the cars to try to teach you some of the colors. So let's see if you've learned any. There is a car that is colored that is covered with snow. What color is the car? You know this seems to me like an awfully unfair question. You're right, it is unfair. Um, it's asking what color the car is, not what color the snow is. Right. The car technically could be white or red, because it doesn't describe the color of the car. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go with white. No, the snow is white. The car is red. Don't worry, things will be much easier to learn when you get a little older. That's not a fair assessment. Absolutely true. It is not. I would like to formally protest as the host of this show. And I'm going to do so in a very mature and articulate manner. This is bullshit. Press space to continue. <laughs> Health. Health. And speaking of which, let's get a check before we go there. Intellectual is a smarty cookie. Not much has changed here. Oh, familial has dropped a little bit further. Mm. Uh, your stats are rising. Some of them That's are in not the, bad. Some of them were in the 30s to start out. Uh, let's see. Okay, so at the point of two years, seven months... There are 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 events remaining. Okay. You were eating at the house of one of your parents' friends, and you were told by your mother to be on your best behavior. However, something that you ate has disagreed with you, and now you feel very sick. I mean, only, well, one, only one choice on the mood. How do you take it? Call mom. Mom walks over to you and asks what's wrong. She brings you into the bathroom and takes your temperature. You don't have a fever. She gives you a glass of warm milk. 
You feel a little better, but it wasn't the milk that did it. No, that was mom. Next. Okay. You're still not completely familiar with using the piss pot. It's still quite fascinating to you. You have just finished and you've cleaned yourself like a big boy. Content. Leave. You have resisted a strong temptation. You deserve a cookie. Hey, uh, there are some on the table over there. Would you like to take one? Yeah. You didn't ask permission first. You get caught with your hand in the cookie jar. It's hard for a child your age to be perfect. Don't sweat it. Can I eat the cookie? No. Uh, Ringo Star. Today is Dad's birthday, and you would like to make him breakfast. Practical. Ask Mom for help. Mom won't let you do exactly what you want to do, but she does help you make Dad a nice breakfast, which makes him feel terrific. Well, great. Okay. Health. The phone rings while Dad A is ironing a shirt. He must leave you alone in the room with the iron. I think you have some idea where this might go. Uh, yeah, I was here for that. All right, I'm so... going to cautiously play quietly. Dad realizes that you are alone with the hot iron and calls you into him. You run into the room and trip over the iron cord. You fall onto the floor, and the hot iron lands on your hands and arms. It, was take, it hurts a lot, and you're taken to the hospital. You suffer minor burns, and your skin heals quickly. You were very lucky. Now, obviously, that's going to have some kind of impact on physical health. Yeah, yeah it dropped. 11%. Temporary. Yeah, again, could have been a lot worse. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. So let's see how close I am to this. It's two years, 11 months, and uh, continue like normal then? Yes. Okay. Two, five, six, eight. Dad must get his teeth fixed, and you must go with him to the dentist. Mom is busy at work, and Dad couldn't find a sitter. You sit in the waiting room for a very, very long time. Dad's got to run out and put more money in the parking meter. He sits you on the floor, gives you a magazine to leaf through, and tells you to behave. Patient. Remove your shoes. No. Patient. Remove your shoes. No. <laughs> Patient. Fucking. Remove your shoes. Fucking no. <laughs> Patient. Be a good boy. Okay, seems a little more reasonable. Your ability to keep yourself amused is a sign of early maturity. This will help you intellectually and creatively. Visit the nurse. The nurse is too busy to pay attention to you, even though you work up the courage to go right up near her. Tear up a magazine. You walk over to the pile of magazines on the stand, reach into the pile, and pull out a magazine. Your coordination isn't terrific. As you lift it off the table, the cover tears with a loud... The lady spies you from the corner of her eye and gives you a dirty look. Blow her a kiss. What a little Romeo. Come here, you little doll. stay. Yeah, hell no. Before you know it, she would have been slobbering all over your face. On the other hand, she was about to give you a piece of candy. Playing coy causes her to make noises at you. Why do they all do that? They make her look absolutely ridiculous. You walk over and affix yourself to Dad's leg. Oh, that's it. 
Uh, make a record here, folks. There will be seven events left on the chart at the time of the end of the infancy era. So the age is three, not four. So your family life as of the end of infancy has been positive and nurturant. And as a result, you have begun to form the critical bonds that are important during this phase of life. Physically, you have been very healthy. And I can cite a couple of uh, events for that. Mm -hmm. Socially, during this phase in life, nothing much is really expected of you. After all, you're still much too young to throw a successful cocktail party. And frankly, anybody who still dribbles on himself probably wouldn't make the ideal dinner guest. However, by now there are some things that you should have mastered. Your progress in this area is as follows. You have been the type of child who charms the lollipops off people. You have been the type of child who is huggable and gets his cheeks pinched by old ladies with bright red lipstick. I hope they mean your face. Now, regarding your emotional and personality development, you're not exactly the type of child who could be trusted to wash his hands before coming to the <laughs> dinner table. If there is a piece of cake sitting in the refrigerator at noon, odds are it'll be in your tummy by dinner. Your thoughtfulness characteristic doesn't really count much for this module. Most children often find themselves at the mercy of their whims and impulses. You're allowed to be cranky now. People will tolerate it much better than when you're a teenager. Then your whining and carrying on will seem a little more objectionable. One thing about your character that has a tendency to put people off is your aggressiveness. You're the type of baby who likes to pull on loose articles of clothing, hair, and any bulbous fleshy object that comes within reach. Bulbous fleshy object, huh? Oh, I'll pull on that all right. <laughs> You are going to have to learn the meaning of make nice. Well that, wrap <laughs> well, that wraps up your status for the first module. Hope you like yourself. If you don't, you can always try to improve yourself in the modules to come. There's plenty of time. Now we move on to childhood. And what's interesting is it bumps you through a year of life, right to four. Speaking of right to four. Yes, indeed. That is precisely the time now, EDT. Same We're going to start with emotional development. Okay, same general idea. And uh, I want to say that this goes all the way to 12 years, but the, uh, the models age you much faster. So, again, just something to keep an eye on. Now you said emotional to start? Emotional. Emotional. Mom has just taken a job that requires her to be away in the morning and early afternoon. So she decides to enroll you in a nursery school program. Upon your arrival, you are greeted by another lady with very skinny legs and large ground, large ground lasses. Large ground lasses, okay. L large ground lasses, yes. There are children playing with buckets of sand, building blocks, and other activities. There is a small boy sitting in the corner with tears streaming from his eyes, a runny nose, and cheeks red from crying. Sad. Make friends. No. What? There's nothing wrong with bonding over common sadness. What is your problem? Excited make friends well, your excitement is a positive sign that you're trying to adapt to a new environment you realize that your mom will be coming back so you try to make friends you see a little boy your age playing in the sand with trucks what do you want to say to him my truck <laughs> um, within within the field of decision oh um, hi the little boy ignores you. You're a newcomer to the social order and you're invading his territory. However, your attempts at being sociable show potential. At very young ages like this, children are more likely to play beside one another than with. The thingy. The thingy, which I still can't tell what the hell that is. 
While you were playing quietly in your room, you were startled by loud muffled sounds coming from someplace else. It seems that your parents are having a terrible fight over something. Your father's deep voice seems to be shaking the whole house, and your mother's piercing screams sound like she's being hurt terribly. Oh, boy. We, we have the benefit of being adults and understanding what that is. Mm-hmm. But if I were to look at it from a four-year-old perspective, that's disturbing. So I'm disturbed. And, um... Crap. Stay where you are. Too, uh, too disturbed to move? Yeah, I guess so. Boom! You hear a very loud noise. Maybe he's killing her. Now what? Uh, go see what's happening. Lightsabers. They might be upset. Lightsabers drawn and let's go. Let's go. The noises are coming from their bedroom. The door is open. Just a crack. Now what? Just listen. You hear a lot of heavy breathing noises and the bed squeaking sharply. You never quite find out what they were all about. Okay. I don't think I want to be exposed to that at that age. We 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 all know outside of the curtain what was going on. <laughs> squeaky, 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 squeaky. And I still have issues hearing squeaky toys. Pretty much for that reason. I'm sorry. Uh, anyway. Left. Your mom is in the bathtub, making a taking a nice relaxing bath. You're playing quietly in the room, and all of a sudden the doorbell rings. Mom doesn't seem to hear it. non challenge Tell mom. Like a good little boy, you tell mom that the door is ringing. She tells you to ask who is it without opening the door. You learn the valuable lesson of not allowing strangers into your home, which makes you smarter. Right. Um, I don't see an increase. I see that I'm 97 and 95. Indeed. Your stats are definitely getting stronger, for the most part. I am one dollar under leet. <sighs> yeah, you have been since the beginning. Since, um, Aunt Edna gave me money or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay, hit the button. You have been invited to sleep over at your best friend's house. Your first sleep away experience. Mixed feelings. <laughs> Option two. You're asking is an emotionally mature way of resolving the ambivalence you're experiencing. Dad reassures you that he and mom will both be there when you get back. He doesn't encourage you to go or stay, but leaves the choice up to you. So what I'll will go. you do? I will go. You go and you miss your parents a little, but your talk with dad has kept you calm enough to have a very pleasant experience. Yay. Woo. Woo. Okay. Okay. Um, um, let's go with, with the first thingy from the, from the left. Okay. Yeah, that one. An exciting movie is on television. The whole family is in the living room watching it. You get up to get a drink of water and return to find that all the good seats have been taken. Devious. Tell mom the doorbell is ringing. She fell for it. She rushes to the door and you jump up onto her seat. When she realizes what you've done, she goes over and sits on top of dad. Everyone seems a bit happier now. Oh, dear. Except for me. I mean, you got your premium seat, and she got her, uh... 
premium seat. <laughs> premium seat. <laughs> Two. Your dad has promised that he'll fix your bicycle. He is taking a nap now, so not really doing anything. Seems like a good time to remind him, don't you think? Annoying. Tap him on the shoulder repetitively a thousand times. You tap dad rapidly on the shoulder and say... Dad? Next to his ear, but he doesn't seem to move. Now what? Shake him! You say... Dad! Oh, Dad! You move him back and forth. He's very heavy. All of a sudden, he makes a loud snorting sound and looks at you glassy-eyed. What do you do now? Say something to him. What do you want to ask him? The first one. Even though you seem helpless, Dad just rolls back over and falls back asleep, mumbling, <sighs> later. Well, that didn't work. Three. Soon after you sit down for dinner, your mother announces that the vegetable of the day is... Drum roll, please. Brussels sprouts. Yeah, real exciting. Obedient. Eat the sprouts without protest. What the fuck kind of child is that obedient? Hey, I enjoyed have them when ever, I had them. Have you ever heard the expression, develop a taste for something? That's a nice way of saying you were forced to eat it as a child. Brussels sprouts may be good for you, but that's also the kind of food that'll make you have bad dreams. You could have gotten away with not eating them. I don't care. One thing I really love about this game, how sometimes the narrator is just downright accusatory. Well, your gentleness is now single-digit fucked. You arrive at the dentist and discover that you have four rather large cavities that need filled. Frightened. Scream in horror. The dentist says, this won't hurt a bit. Stop being such a baby. The drill sounds like an angry insect. There are tubes hanging out of both corners of your mouth. One of them seems to be sucking out that little piece underneath your tongue. The dentist says... Now that's not too bad, is it? No. The dentist pays you no mind and keeps drilling away, making idle conversation while you drool all over yourself. On your way out, you notice the dentist's fish tank. Leave the fish alone. You're wise to realize that getting the last laugh now might mean risking the wrath of Dr. Yanker on your... Excuse me? Is his first name Crank? Well, it's better than Yankum, for which I'd have to ask, is his first name Isaac? DDS. <laughs> Jerry the King Lawler's personal dentist. Also now, Mayor, Mayor, that's the word, Mayor, mayor of, of Knox County. Knox County, yeah. Keen Asai. Which makes it, which makes me realize the irony that Kane is now Cannibal's mayor. Are you are you humming Beatles or something? The wonder of the world is gone, I know um, for sure. It's a lot, it sounds a lot different to me coming out of a human voice. It sounds a lot different to the normal song coming out from my voice. True enough. But in any event. Do the thing with Do the Stooges the thing. and the guy. One of your playmates is the daughter of your mother's friend. Her name is Cindy. 
One day, while the two of you are alone, you become very curious about one another, and Cindy suggests that you play a make-believe game of Doctor. Now, okay. we all know... Where this can go. Yeah, but the question I is... Like to, I would like to try to make it go that way. Oh, of course you would. So we're going to be bold. And you can be the Doctor first. Cindy seems to be full of good ideas, so why not go with it? She requests that you off your clothes and lie down on the operating table. Just as you have finished undressing, Cindy's mom comes into the room, gasps loudly, pulls Cindy out, and describes the scene to your mother. Your mother takes the game for what it is, a perfectly harmless expression of curiosity. Making a fuss over this kind of behavior often sets up a forbidden fruit fantasy, that may contribute to sexual misbehavior in adolescence. Your mom read this in a woman's magazine. Which, of course, are always fucking right. Health. While rummaging around in the kitchen drawer, you come across a book of matches. Speaking of Kane. Hmm, yes. I think the fun thing to do is to be curious and light one in the kitchen. You are mesmerized by the spark and flash the match as you strike it. You let the flame burn down the shaft of the match, then blow it out and light another. The kitchen air soon becomes smoky with a pungent sulfur odor. The smoke alarm rings and sends your mother scurrying to check what's happening. And as a result, you are grounded for a week. I got to play with fire. And it was fairly safe. Hmm. Okay, go to the social. You are in school, and the teacher is giving a boring lecture. The boy sitting two seats away is rolling up a piece of paper and putting it in his mouth. Using the barrel of his pen, he spits the paper at the blackboard where it lands with a wet splat. teacher's furious. She screams, who did this? Everyone in the class is howling until she promise, until she promises that if the person who did not or who did this will not come forward, the whole class will get a punishment. You are probably the only one who saw the true culprit. That having been said, where's your character? Just a moment before you make that answer. Okay. Mixed feelings keep quiet. Ambivalence can be a difficult emotion to handle. You probably feel a little anxious, some guilt, and a pinch of self-criticism. So, how do you handle this? I continue. Y you can't just continue. That's sad. I will fantasize. The teacher catches you daydreaming and sends you out, which might have sure. which might have dodged you the the intended punishment. Good. All right, what do we got? The thing to do. Yeah, which one? The uh, the thing? Beatles one. The Beatles, the social. Okay. At school, all of your friends are talking about a television program that you could not stay up to watch. Friend asks, did you see it? Unaccompanied. I was not allowed to see it. Your confidence prevents them making fun of you. Someone even offers to let you sleep over at his house the next time it's on. Sometimes, friends can be pretty great. Sometimes. The thingy. Oh, the thingy? The thingy. Sorry, I'm having a little too much fun with this. Thought it froze on something or something, something. Nah. You have just been ordered to bed by your parents in the middle of a favorite television show. Anger. Anger. Win. And Winnie. No. 
anger, Complin. Your mother can appreciate the fact that it's not fair for you to have to go to bed during a favorite television show, but finishes her fake-ass sympathy mm -hmm. with, but sometimes life just isn't fair. Mm -hmm. That's not life being fair. That is you not being fair. You damn bitch. Three. Oh, calmness took a shit. So did happiness. Three. 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 Twee. Steal them all. Uh. Steal all the raffle tickets? Yeah. I'm embarrassed. Enlist father's help. Embarrassed. Enlist father's help. Dad coaches you from the car as you go door to door with little success. After an hour, he asks if you'd like to see how it's done. Would you? Let him. Dad shows you the old foot-in-the-door technique at Miss Marcus's house. This technique attracts the attention of both Mrs. Marcus and her 85-pound Doberman pincher, Bruiser, who cleanly removes the front of Dad's sneaker. <laughs> yeah, the first option. Yes. Say it. That was pretty good, but you can only do it twice. Now is not the best time to get wise, but he did ask for it. <laughs> he certainly did. I think that was fucking funny. Two. 420 Blazer! <laughs> Your best friend challenges you to a rock throwing competition. Competitive. Except. Is that on your end or my end? Uh, it's on mine. It is Raymond. I figured. Asking what was uh, what was up with the chat. Doesn't seem like yeah. he'll be able to get in, though. He's got bullshit. Yeah. So competitive and accept, yeah? Yeah. After several minutes of rock throwing for distance, where your friend keeps beating you, your friend dares you to throw a rock onto the roof of an apartment building across the street. Ooh. You go first. He has no problem. Now it's your turn. How big are your balls today? Oh, I see it going bad, please. Will that stop you? I've got big balls. I've got big balls. Do you have the biggest rocks of them all? We're going to find out. Okay. You lean back. Watch the rocks soar. It clears the building and impresses your friend. Sweet. All right. Uh, one. And one. There's one more ice pop in the freezer that is being saved for another family member. Your mouth waters at the thought of this cool, tasty treat. Chicken nugga. <laughs> I'm able to resist. Eat the whole pop. Now, how the fuck do you think this is going to end? What do you think it's going to do? Tell me that I, that I suck. Yeah, pretty much able to resist take a bite out of the pot I really don't think that'll work either hungry eat the fucking pop <laughs> well when it is discovered that the pop is missing you're asked about its possible location tell the truth it's in my tummy what are you gonna do about it your confession is appreciated but generates a lot of anger your family rants, raves, carries on. So what are you going to do? Whoa, there. Holy. I'm going 
going to go to the store and replace the one that I ate. You're not going to go for that option? Correct. Uh, now I got to know later for what that does. Calls your mom a pickle puss. You're not old enough to go to the store by yourself. But, nice thought. Emotional. Emotional. Ow. You've just turned off the television set and your room is pitch black. You through the shadows, you notice that your closet door is open just crack. You can almost see the image of a black hooded axe murderer squinting at you through the door. He is waiting, waiting for you to close your eyes and fall asleep. In the quiet of the night, you can hear his hoarse breath making deep, gurgling sounds. You look away from the door, then look back. It's open a bit farther than it was the last time. If you could only make it to the closet and shut the door tight, you know he wouldn't be able to get out and murder you in your sleep. The morning light will destroy him so you won't have to worry about seeing him when you wake up. Now, calm down. The question is, what do you do? Sneak out of the bed. No. Calm, go to sleep. Jesus, you don't have much of an imagination, do you? You're young once, and only once. You could be locked up for imagining shit like this later, so live a little. Live these nuts. One. One. Your friends are all waiting for you to come out after school. And you have a ton of homework. You, but you've been watching television since you came home. On your way out, your mother asks if you did all your homework. semi honest. Yes. That ain't semi-honest, sir. Honest. Yes. That's a blatant lie, sir. Dishonest. No. Uh, Let me be honest. No. Seems like it's uh, making me pair these off. Sure smells like it, doesn't it? Semi honest. The one that goes with semi honest. Or more accurately, the only one that you haven't put semi honest with. Semi-honest semi is the truthfulness equivalent of semi-pregnant. <laughs> Your mother says, finish what you have left before you go out. No. You have no choice. I'm curious. About what? In, in your screen share that you're putting on the stream... Mm -hmm. That's the same one that I'm seeing live, right? Uh, no, exactly it's, the same. No, it's just the uh, just the game window. Skype okay. doesn't allow me to focus in on a single window, hence why I have it full screened, which actually well, works out okay for a guest stream because then you can see the chat window as well. Right, that works because I had a question about your desktop that I wasn't going to put onto the public if the public wasn't already saying it. Well, I mean, the public hasn't said a damn word, and I don't think the public is even here right now. No, but the pubic is. Oh, yeah, the pubes are always here. Anyway. Well, your intellect is sunk. Somehow your familial is far higher. Uh, your calmness has dropped more. Thoughtfulness, expressiveness, both up. Trustworthiness is up. Yeah, things are happening here. Health it is. While you're playing outside, alone, a car pulls over to the side of the road and the driver motions for you to come over. 
You notice that the license plate reads OBO-237. Suspicious. Stay where you are. He motions for you to come a little closer. And he has a kind enough face. You hear him saying he's a policeman looking for a friend of yours. He asks if you will get in and help him find your friend. I can't do that. He opens the door on your side. You turn to run away. He catches you, drags you into the car. You are kidnapped, tortured, and eventually killed. It's over. That's it's over. That's the end. Huh. That's that's a shame. I was eight. You were eight. And and a quarter. Well, this is how it was for you. So that goes to show everyone who's watching, it doesn't matter how smart you are, you can still be a fucking idiot and get raped, murdered, and killed. True enough. And murdered I can tell you killed. exactly what it was. It was your hesitation to run. I know. Came at it a little too late. Well, do you think that you lived your best life? I'm satisfied. Yeah. Well, congratulations. You are officially the first player to complete a game. <laughs> I, I died at AJ. <laughs> you're just so fucking ecstatic, aren't you? I mean, the the sad thing is I wasn't like being a dick with any of my answers. I was trying to answer them like I think I would. Hmm. So probably it's a good thing that I stayed inside my whole life. Yeah, in that way. At least until you were old enough and big enough to defend yourself. Kind of. Mm. Or have enough weapons, too. True enough. Well, folks, uh, that's it. That's, self, or that's Martyr's Life. Sad as Yay. it was. So, uh, this, uh, this has been Alpha. This has been Martyr. And uh, hopefully the next time we see a slightly slightly more full and less tragically ended life. And until then, have an alpha day. Oops.